Oh, look, they're schlepping the things around the things. As is well said. That's a good assessment of groundskeeping. <laughs> That's right. That's like my grandmother would be like, oh, hey, right, okay. I only want a grounds crew <laughs> made, made of, of Eastern European grandmothers. The last time you were on this show, yes. you sat in a reasonable space where it was still very distracting. Yes. We were just behind. And you said, wow, I've never been somewhere where they're distracting me with so many things. That's right. Well, and right. I, I, I apparently took that as a dare. Right. <laughs> you moved me closer, <laughs> more things, more people, and my children. So I don't know what you may say in this episode, but be careful, because <laughs> apparently... I'll have it, to put a dime in the cursing jar. It has a lot of steam <laughs> here at Express Written Consent. We're so glad you were back, though, because it was a delight having you last time Thank when we you. talked about so many things. And you've been very, very busy. You've been on Big yes. Bang, which is still Correct. a huge success. We just wrapped season 10, yes. Well, how much fun is that? Is it still fun or is it's it really still fun. work? No, it, it, I mean, it's, 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 I'm not in a coal mine, you know? <laughs> it's not like really work. It's, you know, a great schedule, especially yes. if you have kids. A sitcom schedule is very flexible and it leaves a lot of time to do other things such as have children great. Um, or be part of their lives as much as you would like to. But no, it is fun. We do, um, we get along, you know, we have a seven person cast yep. and, you know, there's different friendships that are stronger or more interesting, just like in any group of seven people, but it's enjoyable. And those are sincere smiles when you see us That's all. Awesome you know, grateful to finish a season, and you know, we really are very, very, very blessed. Let's talk about Girling Up. Okay. It's a book. I wrote a book um, kind of from a scientific perspective. I'm right. a trained neuroscientist. Um, but I wrote a book for girls age 10 to 18 about the entire process of becoming female, meaning everything from chromosomes to puberty to nutrition and how your brain works, how sports play a role in the development yeah. of your brain and your body, how we cope with difficult things, and how we kind of make a difference in our lives as young women. And it's got, it really has a scientific kind of backbone to it, mm -hmm. but also a sociological and kind of anthropological one. Like different cultures treat women differently. They do. Different cultures look at women differently and judge women's bodies differently. So I really wanted to write a book for girls who were different, which I was always different, yep. I'm still different. And I wanted to write a book for girls who aren't different to understand the full experience of being female is very varied. Was there a big research base to it? Did you treat I it mean, like a research book or did you? Um, Kind of. I mean, yeah. there's anecdotal stuff. Okay. And we did have um, a pediatrician review it. We had a school counselor re oh, review it. Great. We had a neuropsychologist review it. And we had an OB. GYN. The full gamut. Yeah, just to make sure. Um, and, you know, also writing for a young audience is very different. Yeah, I you would know, imagine. Because there are things that when I was 11, I wasn't thinking about that unfortunately or fortunately girls today are. And so I had to really write so that people wouldn't be offended and didn't feel like I was too conservative because I tend to be kind of conservative. From a developmental phase, what's really important in sports and competitive nature. Well, I think, you know, I think the notion that, that boys and girls should be presented with similar experiences is yeah. very true. There's nothing inherent about, um, you know, the female brain that right. can't do competitive sports or be interested in them. That being said, some girls are not as interested in being competitively motivated okay. at that age. Some are very interested in being socially motivated, and that's normal. Yeah. Um, I was a very competitive, I don't know what the term is now. We used to call it a tomboy, you know? Uh, yeah. But I was always very competitive. I've thrown rackets at many people in racquetball. Not Recently? It's been many years. <laughs> did, did you just look at your ex-husband? I did. <laughs> I may have hit him with a racket <laughs> twice. <laughs> How much do you now do? Uh, this is the panda. Now we're in business. <laughs> Finally, we're where we need to be. Do your sons play sports? Are they sports guys? They do. They're they're athletic. Do you coach um, or do you help or do you no. stay away? I mean, you we've kind of <laughs> no, I don't throw rackets. No, I mean we've their dad and I have kind of gone, you know, a little bit. You don't need to contribute to this conversation. We've gone a little bit back and forth because a lot of parents are really crazy in competitive they sports. Are crazy. And here's the thing: as competitive as I am, I can't handle people screaming at my kid. No. I can't handle people being ridiculous or wanting everyone to have a trophy for losing. I can't handle. I'm old fashioned. And I'm really afraid that I would not be able to control myself yeah. around other parents. Uh, so we've done, we did a season of baseball. My elder has my exact body type I had at that age, and I ran track. Okay. So he's interested in track and field. He's good at basketball. My okay. older son has a very good, very good skill set, but also a really good sports personality, which Love is that. very important. Enormously he's a much important. better loser than I am. The little one a little bit has already thrown things and broken a few things. Sorry. Some parents align that That's way. Right. That's how it goes.
Your new book is called Girling Up, How to Be Strong, Smart, and Spectacular. <laughs> start, bench, cut. Strong, smart, spectacular. We're going to go. We're going to start with, we're going to start with smart. Love it. Start with smart. We're going to cut spectacular. It's too fancy. And we'll bench strong. Because some people are, some people aren't. We'll bench it. Bingo. That's a nice profile. Good. You uh, star in the Big Bang Theory. Start, bench, cut these theories. Okay. Newton's law of motion. Okay. The theory of relativity. Okay. The theory that the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off <laughs> takes place entirely in Cameron's mind. Oh, please. Cut that. Oh. Cut that. So easily. I don't need that. Okay. No. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to start with Newton. Because much as Einstein is Einstein, I'm going to bench relativity in favor of one of the most Newtonian observations that there are. Very Newtonian of It you. wasn't called Newtonian <laughs> before Newton. No. You had to put it all together. They were That's like, right. these things make sense. We'll call it Newtonian. It's Newtonian. Thank you. There's guys in bananas he wants me to know. I'm talking about my book, trying to pay the mortgage. Um, you only get to go to games if we talk about the book. Seriously. Not a chance to blame something on your child. Yeah, Always oh, do. Good. Absolutely. Do. Yeah.